Pivot tables take very complex data and efficiently, compactly summarize it, providing meaningful information from the overwhelming jumble of labels and values. The parts that make up this amazing feature are actually very simple. What we have in front of us is an example of a pivot table. It is simple, but it has some different parts that are easily recognized once you know where they are and what you're looking for. The first is known as a data field. A data field is a field from the source data that contains values to be summarized. In this case, it's total monthly fees. So it's taking the monthly fees field and adding a sum function for it. For most source data, we can choose how to summarize the data. The default will be to count if the field contains text values or to sum or total if it's a numeric field. Here, it's totaling the monthly fees. We usually say we want to count or total by something. That's the reason for summarizing the data. The field or fields by which we want to group and summarize our values are known as either column fields or row fields. A column field, as we can see here as our plan type, is a field from the source data that we assign to a column orientation in the pivot table. Likewise, there might be one or more row fields. Here, we actually have two row fields. We're summarizing by the region, east, north, south, west, and so forth, as well as by the sales reps. Since we have two row fields, we can see that this particular pivot table starts to take on an outline-like format. We can expand and collapse by region if we want to see or hide the individual names of the sales reps. This gives us the ability to collapse pivot tables down and see very high level summary information or expand it out and see more detail. In this case, our row fields, which are sales reps, also become items. Items are a subcategory, if you will, and they can be of either the row or the column fields. An item is going to be created for each unique value in the source data for that particular field. So in this case, we have an item for Anders, an item for Jones, and each other sales rep in the team. Likewise, corporate, family, and individual are the three items for the plan type field that's being used here as a column field. Of course, the main part of the pivot table is of interest, and this is known as the data area. The data area is where the summarized data resides. It's the composition and the total of the intersection of all of those row and column fields we were just talking about. This area, of course, will grow and shrink as the number of items grow and shrink. So if we added another type of plan, or we added another sales rep or another region, this area would grow accordingly. The data area actually contains the summary calculations. There may be one or more summary calculations. In our sample, we have the total for each sales rep by plan type, and also for each region for each plan type. Normally, these are going to be what I like to call the big five. They're going to be a sum, a count, an average, minimum, or maximum. But you can also have more complex calculations. For example, you could figure out a percent of row. If we were interested, instead of the actual dollar figures, we could say, tell us what percentage of the East region Anders sales were, or Jones. And lastly, if we notice along the bottom and the right edge, we have the opportunity to also display grand totals. They can be turned on or off for the row or the column. Here we have both. When appropriate data is used to build pivot tables, you'll find that it's relatively easy to recognize which fields can be used in which capacity. Asking yourself the question of what is it that I'm trying to show will also help you know where the field should be utilized. Recognizing, though, that there are really only three options, row, column, or summary, helps you begin to realize that while pivot tables provide very complex functionality, they are relatively simple in their construction.